Okay, this video is about alleles. Okay, alleles are uh, they're sort of like chromosomes in uh, in genes. And you can have different alleles. Okay, you can have homozygous chromosomes or uh, heterozygous, uh, reconstituted and crossover. It's sort of um, yeah. So what is an allele? Is a specific variation of a gene. Okay. Bacteria, because they have a single ring of DNA, have one allele per gene per organism. All right? It's sexually reproducing organisms. Each parent gene gives an allele for each gene, giving the offspring two alleles per gene. Okay, so you can look at some things that might allele might do, like control coat colour. Okay? Um, and you know, coat colour in mice or something. Alleles are variants of genes. Because alleles are just variants of specific genes, different alleles are found on the same locations and chromosomes of different individuals. This is important because it gives organisms to be incredibly varied in the functions of the various alleles while at the same time being able to re reproduce. Okay, so that's important. This this creates a variety caused by mutations in specific genes giving rise to a wider number of alleles for any trait in a given population, okay? So what is mutation? Because this is going to be important. Some areas of the genome are more protected against mutation than others. So some some's going to mutate more than others and some are protected. For instance, the ends of the chromosomes are often broken and changed chemically because of the interactions with the surrounding cytosol and membrane it may encounter. Okay, so the end of genes can, can deteriorate because of the cytosol and membranes, okay, in the cell. Because um, you've got to remember that DNA um, because this is what we're talking about, is in the nucleus, okay? And um, it becomes RNA that goes out into the cell that creates, basically, at the end of the day, um, forms proteins, all right? So that's what it does. Basically, DNA forms proteins. Um, the breakage of of uh, necessary D and pain uh, can uh, necessitates DNA repair. So sometimes DNA is repaired when it's broken, other times it's not, okay? The enzymes that repair DNA are extremely efficient. They sometimes don't make meet every breakage, okay? So that's just what happens. The repair of DNA molecules is carried out by a variety of enzymes, one of the most important, which is DNA polymerase, okay? DNA polymerase uses free-floating nucleic acid bases, so nucleic acids would be andenine, cytosine, guanine, thiamine, or uracil in RNA, one of the nucleases acid at a time. So it uses free-floating nucleic acids that are in the cell. Okay, after the DNA is unwound by another enzyme helicase, DNA polymerase goes to work on each strand of the two-stranded DNA molecule, okay? DNA bases, okay, and you can see some of the bases here. As I said, thiamine, cytosine, andesine, guamine. There's also uracil, which is RMNA, pyridine, and purine, okay? By reading one strand and adding nucleic acid bases together, it creates a brand new strand that can couple to the first strand. Okay, DNA bases have counterparts that always go together. Guamine is the base pair of cytosine. Thiamine is always the base pair of adenine. That's in DNA. In RNA, it's uracil is with adenine. Okay. So this is a picture of some of the DNA bases, how they link. All right, how they join. And this is the phosphate deoxyribose backbone of DNA. Okay, so these nucleic acids. 
diploid organisms. Now we are diploid, okay, and uh, we are diploid organisms. So an allele is a variant of a gene, as we already said, and some genes have a variety of different forms, which are located at the same position or genetic locus of the chromosome. And we said this before, I just wanted to say it again, because that's important. Humans are called diploid organisms, because they have two alleles at each genetic locus, which one allele inherited from each parent. All right. Genotype for each pair of alleles represents a genotype of a specific gene. Genotypes are described as homozygous if there are two identical alleles at a particular locus and heterozygous if they have two different alleles. Okay. Alleles contribute to the organism's phenotype, which is the outward appearance of the organism. All right, just so that's explaining what that is. Dominant or recessive. Some alleles are dominant or recessive. When an organism is heterozygous at a specific location or locus and carries one dominant and one recessive allele, the organism will express the dominant allele. Alleles can also refer to minor DNA sequence variations between alleles that do not necessarily uh influence the genes phenotype which is remember outward appearance okay so this is a picture of what alleles sort of look like to so say we know example of allele flower color in peas the founder of genetics gregor mendel was a fryer who studied peas one of the traits he studied was flower color okay Mendel's peas produced two different flowers of colour, purple and white. Although he didn't know it at the time, those two colours represented the interactions of different alleles in the genomes of the plant. Okay? Plants are sexually reproducing, meaning they get two alleles for each trait. Okay? The trait for flower colour is determined by a gene that creates an enzyme responsible for creating the pigment we see as purple. Plants that receive each one functioning allele produce purple flowers, while plant, white plants receive two non-functioning alleles producing white flowers. Okay? Functioning allele. Because one functioning allele can completely mask the effects of non-functioning allele, the former is said to be the dominant allele, while the non-functioning allele is said to be recessive. All right, uh, this is a Punnett square. I'm not going to go too much into it, but like because as I've said, plants are sexually reproducing. If someone, if a plant has got, um, you know, B and B, then they get BB. If they have B and little B, they get B and B. So you remember with purple because it's being uh, is a dominant. It's only when they get B and little b and little b is they get a white flower. Remember, that's the recessive gene. So they have to have two. So dominant means I just get to have the one. Recessive means they have to have the two. Okay. Allele interactions. The interactions between these alleles produce important variability in the flowers. While the recessive alleles can be masked by the dominant alleles, it does not mean that the dominant allele is better for the plant. It could, could be true that white flowers attract more pollination and are therefore more successful at reproducing. So there you go. Enzymes. If it was true, if this were true, the allele frequency of the white non-functioning uh, white allele would increase in the population even though it's not functioning. Sometimes the most adaptable function of the enzyme is not to have an enzyme function. So that's interesting to know. Multiple genes and plants. One of the things that most interested Mendel was the enormous variety that he could obtain by crossing two seemingly identical plants. Um, I'm thinking I might have uh, included the table of various traits that Mendel observed. It was if that while each of these traits only had two forms of different alleles could be mixed match an enormous variety of patterns and shapes. What Mendel was beginning to describe the laws of segregation and independent assortment. So seeds, um, grey and round or white and wrinkled. 
cotylations, crustaceans, or yellow green. You can see all the different things that he found. Okay. Segregation. The love the lows of segregation and independent assortment deal with the way cells divide the DNA to prepare haploid cells as such as sperm and eggs. Okay, so haploids only sort of one version. Although both alleles for a given trait start in the same diploid cell, they will be separated into separate eggs or sperms by the end of meiosis. All right. This law of segregation means that while a recessive allele can be mastered in the expression of an organization, it has the same chance of being passed on to the offspring as a dominant allele. So basically, when an egg or a sperm is created in a sexually reproductive um, life form like us or flowers um, the di it starts off as diploid then becomes haploid which is only one allele instead of two okay because that's how it works so have equal so the egg or sperm has equal chance of being dominant or recessive all right independent assortment it's also important that the low of independent assortment, which says the alleles from the same gene will be sorted independently of allele, independently of alleles from other genes. So, what is done for allele for one gene isn't going to affect the allele of another. This is important because it gives rise to the enormous complexity of life, which is important too. For the same pea plant parents, thanks to these lows, you could receive offspring with any combination of traits, and even if the parents look the same. All right. So that's how that happens. It can happen with us too. Allele or an allelomorph is a very different sequence of nucleotides at a particular location or locus on a DNA molecule. Just to get more specific, alleles can differ at a single position through a single nucleide polymorphism, SNP, but they can also have insertions and deletions up to several thousand bases. Okay, so that's important. Most alleles reserve little to no change in the function of the gene product it codes for. However, sometimes different genes can result in different observable phenotypic traits, such as different pigmentation. So that's sort of in humans as well. Well, eye colour, skin colour, that sort of thing is controlled by all this. Uh, hair colour probably too. A notable example of Greek mental scurry is that the white and purple flowers, as I said or the result of a single gene, okay? Multicellular organisms, so that's us and others. We are multicellular organisms. Nearly all multicellular organisms have two sets of chromosomes at the same point in their biological lives, as that is, they are diploid. Now, we've said that before, but it's worth repeating. In this case, the chromosomes can be paired. Each chromosome and each in the pair contains the same genes in the same order and same place along the length of the chromosome okay for a given gene if the two chromosomes contain the same allele and they they and the organism are homozygous so if they've got the same allele they are homozygous with respect to the gene if the alleles are different and the organisms are heterozygous with respect to the gene okay so if the alleles are different, they're heterozygous, the same they're homozygous. Okay, so those are the terms. Um, the allele sample for humans might be ABO blood group. All right. Popular definitions of allele refer only to two to different alleles within genes. For example, the ABO blood grouping is controlled by the ABO genes, which has six common alleles or variants. In popular genetics, every living, most living, human phenotypes for the ABO gene is some combination of just these six alleles. So that would be 0, your A, B, or A, and, or your AB, AB positive, negative, B plus, B minus, O positive, O negative, that sort of stuff, okay? That's what they're talking about there. In many cases, Interactions between the alleles at a locus can be described as dominant and or recessive, according to which of the homozygous phenotypes that the heterozygous most 
resembles. Where the heterozygous is indistinguishable from the home, one of the homozygous, the allele expressed that leads to the dominant phenotype and the other is said to be recessive, okay? Co-dominance. The degree and pattern of dom dominance varies around the locating. Okay, that's the locating in the gene. This type of interaction was first described as grand omega. However, many traits defy this simple cotensorithage, you know, like because nothing in nature is easy or simple. And the phenotypes are modeled by co-dominance and polygenous inheritance. Okay, so that's, that's, that's what we're saying, is nothing in life is black or white. There's obviously, you know, polygenous inheritance and co-dominance. A lot of that, in fact. Wild type allele. The term wild type allele is sometimes referred to describe an allele with thought to consider it to the typical phenotypic characters seen in the wild populations of organisms, such as fruit flies. Okay, such a wild type allele was historically regarded as leading to a dominance overpowering was expressed common and normal phenotype in contrast to mutant alleles that lead to recessive rare and frequent deleterious phenotypes. Okay. It is formerly thought that most individuals were homozygous for the wild allele uh, at the most gene and that any alternative mutant allele was found in homozygous form in a small minority of affected individuals such as genetic diseases more frequently in the heterozygous form in carriers for the mutant allele. Okay. Polymorphic is now appreciated that most or all gene locates are highly polymorphic with multiple alleles whose frequencies vary from population to population. A great deal of genetic variety or variation is hidden in the form of alleles that do not produce obvious phenotypical differences. Remember phenotypicals is what you can observe or what you see. Okay, and it just talks about wild, wild type alleles are often denoted by superscript. This is in terms of when you're talking biology or science, okay? Null allele. Population or species of organisms typically include multiple alleles at each locus, including amongst various individuals. Allele variation at a locus is measurable as the number of alleles, polymorphism, or prison or the proportion of heterozygous in the population. Wild allele is a gene variant that locks the gene's normal function because either it is not expressed or the expressive protein is inactive. Okay. A number of genetic disorders are caused by an individual when an individual inherits two recessive alleles for a single gene trait. This happens a lot with human genetic problems, genetic issues, okay. Often they are recessive, so both parents might be carriers and only uh, have a single gene where, and then an affected individual with a genetic disorder ends up with two genes, from both, one from each parent. Recessive disorders, including albinism, cystic fibrosis, blastemia, phenocoturia, PKU, and Pot-Tay-Sachs disease, amongst many others, all right? These are genetic disorders that humans suffer, obviously. Other disorders are also due to recessive alleles, but because the gene is located on the X chromosome, so that males only have one copy, that is, they are hemizygous, and they are more frequent in males than females. So this is where humans have 23 pairs of genes. The 23rd pair um, is your sex chromosomes um, and they can be XX, XY, XX, XY, XYY or combinations of any of those, okay? But um, more commonly, because males usually only have one copy of an X, um, if it's an X-link disorder like colour blindness, more males tend to be affected because it's females got two Xs, so if they get one X that's affected, they're not going to be um, have the condition where males only get the one X usually, then they are going to be affected. Um, so as I just said, um, this includes red, green colour blindness and fragile X syndrome. Other disorders such as hunting disease occur where the uh, individual inherits only one dominant allele, so that's a dominant um, disorder. 
So they know you can get hunting disease by one gene from any parent, okay? Because it's not recessive, but it's dominant. Epi, epi alleles. While well, heritable traits are generally studied in terms of genetic alleles, epigenetic marks such as DNA methylation can be inherited as specific gene, genomic regions in certain species of a process called transgenerational epigenetic inheritance. Okay. Epi the term epi is used to distinguish these heritable marks from traditional alleles which are defined by nucleotide sequences. A specific class of epi allele, the metastable epi alleles, have been discovered in mice and in humans, which is characterized by stochastic probabilistic establishment of epigenetic state that can be myototically inherited. Okay. Idiomorph, the term idiomorph from Greek. This is just introduce some of the basic terms. You can research more on this yourself. I just want to talk about basic alleles, but this is some of the terms you might come across, okay? The term idiomorph from Greek morphos, uh, idio, it was introduced in 1990. Place of alleles to denote sequences in the same locus and different strains that have no sequence similarity and probably do not share a common phylogenetic, phylogenetic relationship. This is used mainly in the research of mycology, which is sort of like fungus, okay? And so that concludes my presentation on this. Um, I wanted to sort of talk about it, alleles, and as I said, look research into this more yourself. All right, thank you.